Blog Talk Radio. All right, and welcome everyone to another edition of RF Sports Radio. I'm your host. Uh, RF Sports himself, Mr. Rodney Fisher. I'll be joined by Roy Fisher here shortly whenever we're able to get him on the line. But I want to welcome you guys back to a brand new show. We got so much to cover, so much to talk about. We're going to get into the NBA Finals. We're going to talk about the Dallas Mavericks. People have been asking me about my opinions about that. We're going to get into a little bit of the, uh, you know, Damon Lillard talk and also into the Giannis talk as well. Uh, talk about him also. So I'm going to make sure you guys tune into the show. You can always catch us on uh, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you, you can catch us. And, of course, you can catch us on our YouTube channel uh, by going to YouTube and looking up RF Sports Radio there. Uh, again, if you guys want to be call in, you guys are welcome to. Uh, we haven't had any guests in a long time, but, hey, you want to call us, give us a call, 319-527-6059 to call in speak to RF Sports Radio. Let's, let's see if we got Royce on the line now. Royce, are you there? Yes, Ronnie, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I'm, I'm glad we got okay. you got you uh, connected now. Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Just kind of introing things. And, uh, you know, first topic we want to talk about, of course, is going to be the NBA Finals that are going on right now. We see we've made it to game six after the uh, yes. the Phoenix Suns went up 2-0. And now we see they lost three straight to the Milwaukee Bucks in what I think was probably a classic signature moment. Uh, for the Bucks in Game Five with the alley oop dunk, but Giannis kind of gave him his uh, finals play, the finals uh, highlight of, of the finals could be. But just your overall thoughts on uh, now that we're at this three-two with the Bucks up going into Game Six tomorrow. Well, actually, it started the game before with the block shot and the two turnovers, and that really knocked Phoenix out. But I, I, I'm gonna put this all on the coach, Money. Uh, he's got to ta- call timeout when you get when the team is making a run. You got to call timeout. You got to slow the momentum down, and he got to get more guys involved. You got to get Crowley. You got to get Bridges. You got to get Johnson. You got to get Payne. You got to get those guys going. So they they they're good in the first three quarters, but in the fourth quarter you don't hear their name called, and I think that's a mistake. And also, you got Booker. Trying to play James Harden ball. He's not passing. He's shooting every time. I know he's hitting he's 40 points a game. But yeah, 40 to points. win a championship, you got to have – it's a team effort. I can't think of any championship other than Michael Jordan, but one guy actually won it. But it's actually a team sport. You know, you look at Miami. Mm-hmm. They had Ray Allen. They had uh, Dwayne Wade. They had, you know, Chris Bosh, you know, that – uh, it's more than one guy to win a championship. More than two guys, really, to win a championship. So I'm going to put this all on Monte. he got to do better job of coaching. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Your thoughts. You know, it's, well, well that, that's interesting you say that because if you think about it and go back to, like, um, the games that Phoenix won when they went up 2-0. And, right. he, and even right. winning the Western Conference Finals against uh, against the Clippers, it was a lot of team ball, a lot of, like, guys stepping up. Right. The Cam Johnsons, um, you mentioned uh, Bridges as well, too, not getting a lot of shots. And he was hot in game five. You know, he, he only hot. missed, what, he one three-pointer? The whole, right. the whole game, one he was three hot. Pointer. So. All right, All right. But, but and Jay Crowder had, had, what, 12 discuss. points? Yeah, he had 12 as well. But, again, you may need 20 from Jay Crowder in, in a game five. Right, right. Um, right. You need him just to be a little bit more aggressive than just be a – a defensive player all the time, but because he can make threes. But I, the other thing that me and you discussed kind of before the show, as we watched the game, was you know uh, they they really didn't like you said they played the ISO ball with Booker so much that they get didn't get everybody else involved. You think that the other guy that was just coaches, that, around? You said that was a coach's call, but you also you got to coach out there too in CP3. Shouldn't he be the one to kind of like? Facilitate this because he played a lot in that fourth quarter in Game Five. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, Chris Paul. A different Chris Paul from the first, from Game Three and Game Two. You know, he he wasn't there the first two games, and they, like you said, they spread the ball around. But 
I don't know if it's getting in his head where he got to take over and all the talk about him being, you know, this great point guard and his last chance. You know, he seems like he's playing desperate to mm-hmm. me. Uh, committing well, I, too many turnovers, trying to do too much. What and I would actually just be a leader. To that too. I'm sorry. I, I can add to that, though, by just saying that not only is he not doing that, but let's be honest, you know, they, they have nobody on that team that can play against Giannis head up. And I think Giannis uh, finally realized that. You know, he's finally kind of being more assertive going to the basket. He's still taking some threes that I don't like. But he's being more assertive going to the basket. He missed those free throws in game five, but made up for it with the alley you dunk. Like I said, that signature kind of finals highlight, if you will. But they don't have anyone that can match up to him. And that's what's going to make it even difficult to win in game six. You you brought up the timeout. You said they should have took a timeout late in that uh, fourth quarter, right? Yes, when he missed the, the free throw and they got the rebound. I think it was 23 seconds, 29 seconds left. Instead of calling Instead of time, Booker I could call the play. And, right. Booker came Lost down and made the turnover. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Could have called time out there. It's perfect time to call a play. You know, you put your shooters out there, Payne, Cam Johnson, Crowder, you know, and run a play for it. If not for Booker, let, you know, kick it out for a three. You win the game. So, so do you, do you think I, I it's over? Do you think game my... six is it? I, I don't think so. I think everybody wants to see game seven. Phoenix is going to play different if they make the adjustment. Giannis is going to get his. You know, nobody in the league can stop Giannis. That's a given. Yeah. But when you have uh, Middleton playing the way he's playing, you know, and uh, Lopez, you know, playing the way he just stands out there at the time to hit a shot. And Aiken got to show up. Yeah, he got to play better. He he's been quiet in the fourth quarter, man. He he's getting out played in that middle position. He's just he's just getting out played. But you, you can't stop Giannis. You got to keep the other guys from. Yeah, and uh, guys I'm looking at the box. I mean, the, the, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm looking at the box scores. Milwaukee had 21 fast break points. Things had 12. Uh, Milwaukee had 23 bench points. They only got 15 from Phoenix bench. They got to do better. They got to do better. But it's been a great series. I'm not complaining. And you well, have to have five some was the best game of the good. series. Game was, five yeah, was the best I, game of the series. Absolutely. But, you know, I got a little sympathy for Giannis. He, they, they've been knocking on the door. You know, you, you got to learn to win the championship. You don't just... You know, you got to lose to to learn how to win. So, I do have a little sympathy for Giannis. You know. Well, let me let I mean, me ask actually, you this: what what does what does now? Let's say I, I think they're going to win Game Six and put it out of their misery. But it, you said they may go to a Game Seven. I think that I think that team is broken after what happened in Phoenix. They were expected to win that game. You could, you could tell they felt like. They should win that game. They came out there strong. They lost it. I think it's over. Right. I think the Bucks closed it out at home. But you brought up Giannis, and I, I want to talk a little bit about what does this mean for him if he's able to close him out in game six. We know he'll probably be the finals MVP. He's already been a two-time MVP of the league. What, does this begin his dynasty, his legacy? Does this start now? Absolutely. He's coming up. You know, two back-to-back MVPs, and the next year he wins a, a title. That's a pretty good three-year run. I, absolutely, being an MVP back-to-back, defensive player of the year. Okay, we're going to look at Russell Westbrook. They got many titles here once. Scoring title, most uh, double-doubles, most triple-doubles, and still no title. You know, right. so that, that, does make, that, that does make a difference. We win a championship, that's the ultimate. And they got a chance to repeat, man, if they, they, you know, next year, who's to compete against them in the East besides Brooklyn? Well, well Brooklyn's going to be better, we know. Um, Atlanta's going to be right there. They're going to be tough, but, again, they have a matchup problem. Giannis is a right. problem. You know, the only other team that can match up with them in the East is, you know, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. honestly. Yeah, so – 
But yeah, it, it could Andrew start Jones. something big. It could start something big for Giannis, you know. And like you said, you know how the sports works. We we've, we've watched it for a long time. Right. You got to kind of knock on the door before they let you in. And uh, the Bucks team has been knocking on the door a lot. The Suns are just now knocking for the first time. It's and they got a bad they time. lose. Right, but they got time to to come back and win another. They got a great nucleus of a team. So does Atlanta, you know. So uh, they have a chance to go, but I think it's just Giannis' time. It's this time to get one. You know, I well, think Chris he wants Paul, to get one because his brother has be one. Yeah, well, yeah, Chris Paul's absolutely. not going to be there next year. I, I don't think he's there next year. I, I, my, my my bet is that he'll be a Laker next year, but, again, what do I know? But I don't think he's going to be a Phoenix Sun next year. I, I just don't think you don't so. Think I, think he keep, I think he's going to keep chasing that ring. He's gotten he's good. He's gotten so close this year, you know, with the move to Phoenix that I think he's going to keep moving until he gets that ring. I think he goes to to L.A. to play with the Lakers next year. That That's just my thought. But I could be wrong. Well, you could be wrong, but I, I think I would take another run in Phoenix. You know, they won 51 games. That's a lot of games, mm-hmm. you know, and they do have a great team. They got there some kind of way. I know there's a lot of injuries involved and, Lakers and Clippers, but you know you got to get admit they they played their best basketball in the playoffs. They they were a great yeah. team to watch, great team to play. They beat just about everybody. So I mean you know you can't take it away from them. And well, why would you want to go to to L.A. with all those old guys banged up, <laughs> uh, the spotlight, the old guys, you huh? know? And, and if you come up short playing with LeBron and AD. That's really a stain on your record. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I want to remind you guys, uh, we, you know, it's been a while since we've been on, but we're back. We're back uh, two times a week. Whenever we're on, make sure you uh, give us a call, join the show, 319-527-6059 to join. Uh, you know, we talked about maybe Chris Paul to L.A. I want to sh- shift gears a little bit because you know, we talk a lot of basketball, and – you know, if you, if your team's not in the finals, you're kind of thinking about what your team's going to do next. And right. so I want to talk to you about this this news of uh, Damian Lillard finally saying that he wants to get out of out of Portland. Uh, this is a guy that, if we remember, a few years ago, he was saying how he didn't want to join the super team, he wanted to build his own team right. there in Portland and wanted to defeat LeBron, not join LeBron, and now he's had a little bit of a change of heart. He wants to get out of Portland, join a team. Um, th- this to me is kind of like I know people aren't talking about it a lot because of the finals, but this feels like you know KD leaving Oklahoma City. I mean, it feels like it's going to be a big shift in the NBA uh, landscape by him leaving Portland and going somewhere else. Well, can can you really blame it? You know, nine years. They've been knocked out of the playoffs first, what, first round every year? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, they made it to the Western Conference Finals. Um, right. Last year? No, they not yet. Was it last year or year before last? Year yeah, before last. They made it to the yeah. Western Conference Finals year before last year. And they not, and they came up short. And it, it's been nine years. You know, you spend nine years, you get a little frustrated. You see guys getting rings, you know, like JaVale McGee. <laughs> You know, another guy, <laughs> that's your, Dwight Howard. That's always a go-to, you know, man. He, 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 right, Dwight. He's never going to come on the show again. He's never coming no. on the show again. Much as you Dwight about. Howard. I, I mean, just think about it. You see all these guys getting rings. You know, you got to feel something about it. And, and, and Damon is one of the top players in the league, you know. And uh, he's scoring points and, you know, doing that and knocking down threes is fine and good. But the ultimate goal is to win a ring. I don't blame him for leaving to go somewhere. You know, he's getting old. He's not getting any younger. You know, so I don't blame him. And you see LeBron going year after year, and you feel like you're just a better player than some of these other guys, you know. And and you better get it before the Golden State revamp. Because when they get that going, it's going to be a whole different ball game. The West is only getting stronger. You know, you got Dallas, yeah. you got Phoenix, you got Denver. You know, you got a lot of teams. You got the Clippers. The West is tough, man. So, 
Now it's your yeah, chance this, this and one of opportunity to get a championship. This was the right time for a team like Phoenix to take advantage of the West. And like and you, and you, you got on me about this, but I said everybody was hurt in the West, and and, the, and it's true. Kawhi got hurt, LeBron got hurt, Anthony Davis got hurt. Um, but right, you know, uh, we've uh, seen uh, that Jamal every, Murray got hurt in every finals, a playoff, a run in the end of the season. This is not the first time. You know, Kawhi Leonard got hurt. You know, uh, the, when he made play Golden State, uh, uh, I can go back to to the San Antonio Spurs. I can go back to even further back there to the the, the Lakers. It's always somebody hurt, so that's nothing new. But that's yeah, when but other like guys have to step not up. Not like this. Well, not not no, not, not like, like this. this. I, I haven't like seen this. anything like this. Yeah, I haven't seen anything like this. But then you know you always gonna have somebody hurt or somebody limping. It's the end. it's like the end of the season in football. Guys are banged up. Yeah. You know, well, let's, but let's be honest city. though. Let's 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 be honest. In terms of and, and, and again, I'm not I'm not trying to kind of downplay the environment. Sounds like it. The pro- I'm not trying to downplay the protocols that guys have to go through and start the season up real quick. I'm not downplaying that. Let's be real. This was a this was a pretty easy road to the finals for both teams. I mean, let's be honest. It, it, you know, the Phoenix had a pretty easy road, and I would argue that the Bucks had a pretty easy road uh, playing a depleted, you know, Brooklyn Nets team. And we know Philly. Philly, you can't really believe in them or their coach Doc Rivers. I, I, I knew they weren't gonna do anything. And then Atlanta, an undersized team, getting there for the first time. So they had a pretty – both teams, to me, had a very easy path to the finals. I, I I'm say. not – I'm going to have to take you up on that statement because in the bubble last year, I think it was the easiest year I've ever seen other than the, oh, no. the no, no, suspended no. season. That was gym ball all over the place. That's like going to the wreck playing ball. No crowd, yeah, but no during, people. During the height no of the height. pandemic in a bubble, no guys, family, no well, guys, well, separate from your family. Most, guys, right? did, the unknown. most guys did not want to be there. Let's just be honest. Yeah. I'd say 75% of the players did not want to be there. You know, it's like you had to go to work. So, you know, your heart's really not in it. If you, it's a pandemic going on, you don't know whether you you're going to test positive that day. Guys had to miss. You know, guys uh, got stuck in the airports. Guys left protocol. I think that was easier than this year. At least you had a, nah. almost a full season of basketball. I would disagree. I would disagree. I would disagree. Starting the season early, guys getting hurt, guys not playing. To me, yeah, this was probably one of the but, but easiest But they, they had a long layoff right in the playoffs. to start the bubble. They had a long layoff before they suspended the season. Remember that? In December. Right. Right? They had a long layoff, which they normally don't have. So guys had time to rest. Guys had time to heal. And then the season started, which was short. Played in the bubble. You weren't out running around. You, you didn't have to fly to different locations. You stayed in the same place. It was much easier last year than it is. This year, guys were flying back and forth across the country. They had back-to-back games. They had one time in between games. So I think the yes, bubble was easy. You didn't have to travel. You got big, but the, good. I'm, you had open. Well, would you say the playoffs were easy? The teams that they had to play, the competition level was a lot easier than Yes, because guys other did not want to be there. They wanted to be no, home no, with no. their I'm family. I'm talking about this year. I'm talking about this year with everybody hurt. Well, this year was great. Cause we, look, look, look what came out of this year. Morant, uh, Trey Young, Luka Doncic. We saw a whole generation grow up this year. Payne, you got all kind of guys. Collins in, in Atlanta. You saw a lot of guys grow up this year. I think this year was really exciting. I mean, because it was like the passing of the guard, you know, passing the torch. Mm-hmm. The the Bucks in the playoffs, they've been there since 71. Phoenix had been there since who God knows how long since Charles Barkley played. I was a child. So, 
it, 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 I think it was more exciting this year than it was last year in the bubble. I think it was easy. But we saw the changing of the, of the, of the captain of the guards this year where these young guys start to perform. And the league is in great hands going forward because you got stars all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can say I do agree with that. It was good seeing the young guys step up and seeing some emerging stars that you named. I still say it was a pretty easy road. And, and we're going to see, you know, like I said, I think they'll win it out in six. I think this will be over tomorrow night. I think we'll be talking about, you know, championships and for how many championships the Bucks may actually win if this is the start of a dynasty. That'll be a topic of conversation on the next show. I think. Well, one thing about this year's playoffs, seven. nobody got swept. Nobody. Yeah. That's one thing about this yeah. year's playoffs. Nobody got swept. True. Right? That's true. So, you know, it was a great a game. Point. I know you watched all of them like I did. And uh, I, so I'm going to disagree with you on that. I'm going to say this year was harder than last year. I know you. I know you. You don't know, feel that way because your Lakers won, but I think the Lakers <laughs> had the easiest road to the championship I've seen in my. Oh, uh, we don't have to argue yeah. that. We, we, Not, other than the short season, but San Antonio won. It should be an asterisk by that championship. No, let's not go there. Let's not let's not turn okay. this into one of those episodes. Okay, I'm well, I, I, I can, so. pretty sure I could get a couple of calls to agree with me because the asterisk should have been on this last year's championship. But well, it was you, all really good. I, it, it's been a good series. Whoever wins tomorrow night, and I think Milwaukee win. But uh, if either team had won, I've been happy. <laughs> I've been satisfied. Yeah. Well, if you agree or disagree, make sure you give us a call, 319-527-6059. Uh, we're going to jump into the big topic tonight. Um, a lot of people are probably wondering what we think about our home team and some of the changes that have gone on. Because the last time we were doing the show, Royce, things were a lot different here in Dallas. Uh, uh, they are right now. And this, and is, uh, this is something that's kind of – yeah, this this is something, you know, that was kind of – well, first, I, I don't know where they even start. You know, I, I think we should start with the first real move that happened. That was Donnie Nelson Donnie. leaving, and I, I, I want to combine that with Rick leaving because Rick quit. Donnie kind of quit. Absolutely. was fired, and then Rick – Really quit the man. Yeah, yes, he actually did to Indiana. Quit. So I want to. I want to start. Let me just start there first. And we've okay. been around Donnie a lot. Been around Mark a lot. Of course, been around Rick a lot. So I just want to. I want to give you the floor first to kind of give your thoughts on Rick quitting. Okay, let's start with Donnie first. You know, Donnie's been around a long time. He inherited the job from his dad. I think they both made some great. Picked up as being a general manager. They got Luca and Dirk, two of the best European players, but they couldn't they couldn't pull any big time players. Every time they tried whoa, to pull whoa, wait, stop. Somebody, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop right there. We got to quit saying this about Donnie. We got to stop it now. The y'all the years he's been here, and you can only name two players that he drafted and stayed Mavs. And that, and that was Dirk that's won, and Luca right. who is, is is fairly new. We got to quit giving Donnie credit for just doing for only finding two guys. And okay, did a horrible let's job go back and look. There. Okay, he brought in Lamar Odom, which was a bust. He brought in Delonte West, which was a bust. He brought in uh, Rondo, which was a bust. That was three. That, that's just three bad choices I can name. And they never, they took him, they never did get anybody to play with Dirk. His whole yeah, That's what I'm saying. You can, you can name a lot of bad, you can name a lot of bad choices. I don't bad <laughs> draft picks. <laughs> okay. The, uh, that's right. Yeah. Come what on, guy now. That got he, he was terrible. Uh, what, what was his name? Chandler that Parsons. Went to Indy? It's, yeah, Chandler Parsons. Yeah, I, I can keep naming him. Let me keep naming him. He was terrible. He was terrible. Oh. Right, you can't give and, you can't you can't and, you can't just, but, we can't but, keep saying he was all right because he got dirt. 
You know what I'm saying? But, we got to call like look, it look, is. Look, look, look at the general manager you have now. Donnie Nelson was the last of that breed. He got all these young guys in there now. Toronto has young. Even uh, Phoenix got, uh, what's the name? Uh, James, uh, James Johnson. James Johnson. James you Johnson. Know, yeah. I mean, you know, Philadelphia. And it, it, it was time for Donnie to go. I think so. You know, it's a lot younger now. You got LeBron James guys, you know, <laughs> bring his – you know, man going to be general managers, Nick. He's just getting younger. It was time for Donnie to go. I, I think it was just his time to run out. I, I think he did a good job. If I had to give him a grade, I'd give him an a, a for Dirk and an A for Luca and a B for all, everything else. So I want your stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, give him a, I would give him a C because everything else was so bad that he did. The draft picks, the trades, uh, everything was bad. He traded Steve Nash. He, I mean, he, everything he did was bad, man. They I traded just, Jake he found Dirk. He, he found <laughs> Luca. That's what I'm saying. I just, I, I, other than that, you know, he was trash, I think. But right. moving on to Rick, a guy that we spent a lot of time with. I, I'm gonna say this about Rick, man. You know, I, I, I feel I don't know how she. I don't know if I'm feeling the right way. But I'm kind of like pissed at Rick. It's kind of I'm kind of torn because number one, I thought he should have been fired a long time ago. I've been saying I'm for sure. at least the last years three that years we need to let Rick go. I mean, before we got Luca, I was saying right. it's time to let Rick go. He just was. I could tell that, but then the players really didn't like him like that, and he had stopped right. coaching. I don't know how many times me and you have watched games or had a conversation well, co- after the game and, and realized that he did not coach. Like he just literally nah. would not coach in the fourth right. quarter. He, would, he wouldn't run a play. He wouldn't call a timeout. He wouldn't make a substitution. He wouldn't do anything in the fourth quarter. Again, this was going on for years. He just for quit years. coaching. Yeah, that right. He wouldn't play they lost the young too many guys. tough he games they, they could have won. Yeah. He lost yeah. too many young guys. I, I felt that way, so I'm glad he's gone. But at the same time, I, I'm I'm just kind of like, I can't believe you quit. I can't believe after all of that we did, holding on to you, knowing you know, give me these, you know, all this economy to do it your way, and you just up and quit to take a job in Indiana. One I thing mean, I will give Rick credit for is. Uh, Getting the best out of the players he had, even though he had a lot to work with. I but at the same did. time, I I'm a, at the same time, I'm gonna fault him for not playing the players he did have. He did all the new guys, the rookies he never played. They rode the bench. Uh, some of the substitutions he made, he went with Cleaver a lot, a little bit too much. Okay. He can't defend me, you know, playing. And he, Josh Richardson. Was a great starter, and he just pulled him from the lineup. I, I, I don't understand that some of the decisions he made, but it was time. Rick is the last of the dinosaurs. His style of play, is, they, they don't do that anymore, and he's still playing yeah. that style of play. I don't know what he's going to bring to Indiana that's new. Uh, like the way I look at it, Indiana is going to remain mediocre. You know, I don't see them making it to the playoffs. They will win some games, but I don't see him being competitive in the East. And for yeah. him to just quit, maybe he started writing on the wall. I don't know. Maybe uh, he, he had some ties to Donnie, and he just couldn't let go. But I thought that was pretty bad for him to just outright quit after, I don't know, he had served out so long and, you know, Mark Cuban really let him run everything, you know, so uh, I don't and like yet, more about that, yet, but, but I like Rick. I like Rick as a person. I think he's a great guy. I had been in conversation with him, well, I, but as a coach, he's going to be a I've seen ago. him, be a, I've seen him be, a, be a jerk to so many people. I've seen him be nice, I ain't going to lie, but I've seen him be a jerk to so many Oh, yeah. That, um, Especially when they ask you know, I, I, I don't I, yeah, but, but at the same time, you know, at the same time, you know how you have to act with certain situations, man. You know how 
he used to act, and I used to be like, "Well, you, you know, you're not even coaching out there." Yeah, absolutely. About you're not coaching out there, but but I, but like you said, I agree with you. Again, his style, I don't think if it doesn't work in Dallas, then it's definitely not going to work in Indiana or any other but, place. Yeah, but too many press yeah, conferences I would hear. Too many press conferences press I would hear him say, I'm, "This is on me. This loss is on me." Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you yeah. know that that got to be the norm at the end of every game. I'm gonna put this off on me, and I would say, exactly, "Yeah, it is on you." <laughs> you know. Yeah, it is. And, uh, right, right. So. Well, so, Cuban but didn't it's have time for a change. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, I was going to say, he didn't hesitate at all. He moved really fast, bringing in some of the older guys. First, he hired Dirk as a special assistant, which I thought Dirk already was for some reason. Right. But then, right. Well, we course, did he was uh, coming back with in the, some kind of capacity. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, he brought in um, Jason Kidd, who was drafted here, run one co-rookie of the year that year, uh, came back, right. played with us three years, won a title. Um, here in Dallas, and now he's back as a head coach. And he talks about how it's kind of like a full circle moment for him. I, I wish I had right. the audio pulled up. I, I should have done that before. But it, he was talking about how it's full circle for him. He's ready to go. He's ready to get going. And, let, and let's just, that's just kind of what it is, Roy. It's not now. Who, uh, I, I guess my first question to you is, did they? Do you think that uh, they consulted with Luca before, before this hire? And how do you think that conversation went? I I I think they did. I think they ran the name by him. Uh, my understanding was Luca and uh, Carla didn't get along very well. Uh, yeah, uh, you could see. I could tell that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could tell that in the game and. Uh, uh, it, it just didn't work because Luke, Luke played one way and Carlisle wanted him to play another. And it wasn't until this year he just really let Luca go. You right. know, and I, so I, I think the Mary, I think that's a kid to be a good high. I mean, he's younger. He, I think he can relate to the players by having played. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he just left the Lakers, so he knows a little bit about. The Lakers organization and how they run, which gives Dallas a chance to beat the Lakers, you know. And uh, I think he's gonna bring in some good younger guys, and that's what they needed. You know, the yeah. league has and, changed. And, and I forgot to yeah. mention that GM Nico Harrison too. You know, Nike executive, Nike. new right. a lot of guys. I mean, it, that, that I, I, I'm excited for the combination of the two. I think, like you said, I mean. You're right. It's a different NBA. Guys will respect Kid more than Carla, even though Carla has been coaching longer, has the Absolutely. title, even played in the league. But but no one remembers when he played. Like no one re- remembers his team with Bird. I mean, these guys are young, right. like you said. They know Jason Kidd. Uh, they have affinity for him. Everybody wants to handle the ball. And I think he can really, really help Luca. Hopefully, right. kind of settle down a little bit. I mean, Luca, Luca led the league in points, but at the same time, he he's got to understand that he's got to trust his guys. He too. was tired for the time he got to fourth quarter. He was tired. But, <laughs> he was uh, to your other point, they got to give him some guys to trust. Right. You know, so 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 so, what do you think about the moves? You think you think there are more moves to? What about the roster moves that they're going to make? I mean, I know it's early. We're going to talk about this a lot throughout the summer, especially when free agency really kicks off. But but I got to hope and pray that they're talking to Damon Lillard, that they're thinking of a plan, you know, something's cooking here in Dallas. Well, you know, one prospect I'd like to see them go out to Cal Lowry. That would take the ball out uh, of the game. I don't know about and he's that. A, he, know he's about a dog, that. man. He's a dog. I don't know about you that need one, some man. dogs on your team, right? You need some dogs. Well, listen, Cal, Kyle Lowry, Lowry gets, is better Lowry than gives doing me nothing. Lowry gives those CP3 dirty player kind of vibes. If I if I could be honest, the man you know, kind of like flop, 
try to draw the foul. That that right. I, I don't like that kind he of play. Take, he takes charge. I don't like that kind of play. He plays relentless. He's he's a veteran. That's what you need with Luca, a veteran to kind of guide it. So you got to bring in a veteran player, whoever you get, whether it's free agency or just picking somebody up, you know that's available. But you got to have some veterans on the team, man. You you, you got to. Yeah. And who who on the team is a veteran right now? Nobody. Yeah, well, yeah, they need. I I I said they do need to get some veteran presence on the team. In that case, but I who they have that, now on the team is a veteran. Was, well, nobody. Nobody's on the team is a veteran. Absolutely. You know? uh, they, they just don't have it, you know. I agree with you 100%. I, I like the Cal Lowry thing. I was being a kind of, a, you know, going over the top a little bit, but I can understand you know, bringing a guy like that in to get Luca right. off the ball a little bit more. Right. Somebody you can bring the ball up. Yeah, yeah. Be, and, and Jalen Brunson could have been that guy, you know. If, if Carlisle would have kind of – Develop it a little bit more like that. Brunson right. could have been that guy, you know, that Absolutely. type of player. But I like to see him do that. But I think they need to go try to get a third because Porzingis isn't going anywhere. Try to get a third kind of right. superstar, if you will, kind of build that trifecta uh, while they have right. the opportunity to do so. And I, I hope this Dame Little, although I don't know how they're going to handle the ball together. You got two guys who are going to put up <laughs> 30 points each. But if they but can make it work is, in Brooklyn, they can, can make they it work get in Dame Dallas, Dollar? I think. Can they get Dane Dollar? That's the question. Do they, yeah, do they, they have no draft picks. <laughs> right. Uh, they've got, you know, nobody that's really kind of a tradable commodity. No one's going to take Porzingis and his contract. No, so. It'd have to be Brunson, Richardson, Porzingis, something like that, a three-packet deal to get somebody. Mm-hmm. And and even then, you know, Bronson is a trader because he's young. He's a good player. He, I think he. I think if they do trade him, it's gonna come back and bite him in the butt wherever he goes because he's, a, you know, he's a great player. He's developed every year. He's been there. He just doesn't get to play a lot in Dallas. Once he goes somewhere where he starts, I think he'd be great. But uh, rather than do anything, if you're not gonna do anything, go get Kyle Lowry. Get somebody. <laughs> you know. Mm. You know, uh, what do you think about DeRozan? I, I'm He's not really player. sold on him, uh, be, only because now he can create his own shot. I, I, I believe that. I don't know how he's gonna. It's hard to say because I don't know. I don't know what what's gonna fit with a guy like. I mean, you got a guy like Luca who is a MVP candidate. He's gonna put up 35 a game. Right. You need you need good compliment players. I don't know if you necessarily need a. I don't know if Demar Derozan is ready to be a compliment player. I think he I, went to I, San Antonio I, I, thinking he could be a star again. I don't think he wants. I'll to take Derrick Rose player. at this point. I'll take a Derrick Rose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could they could work out. They could work. They, they could, could work. work out. So you, you like know, you want to see them get a point guard. You want to see them add a add a pure point absolutely. guard to the team. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, even though I like Benny Smith, I think he made a lot of growth. He's a good defensive player. But I don't think he's a starter because you're not going to get much offense. He's, he's the kind yeah. of hang around the bucket cleanup guy. He had a couple of threes. But, you know, you need somebody to compliment Luca. You need a guy to yeah. get you 16 to 18 points a game. You know, well, and that's I, not I, Benny I know Smith. one thing for sure. I know one thing for sure, you know, Mass fans that have been listening to us for the last, you know, 10 plus years, I can guarantee you phone calls are going on as we speak. Jason oh, Kidd, yeah. Nico Harrison, Mark Cuban, that combination, trust me, right. they are they are on, on the phone making calls trying to put deals together. They, they are going to come back ready to operate uh, in the new season. I, I guarantee you that. They're making calls. Well, Jason, Jason did, kid did say he had a message for Maverick fans. He said, practice your vocals over the summer because he wanted to be loud because they're going to be winning some games. So that that's a big statement to make. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just hope he yeah. can back it up. But uh, yeah, I, I'm excited yeah. about it. Like I said, it was time. Carl, actually, yeah. Carl, I inherited the team from Avery Johnson. That was really Avery yeah. Johnson's team. Really and they team, went on yeah. 
they they went on to win a championship with Avis team. They had already been to the finals and lost to mm-hmm. Miami. But they came back and won a championship, but that was Avery's team. So really I really can't credit him with that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, And Dirk was just great. That was Dirk the only was thing that time player. they did anything. Right. Dirk, Dirk Dirk was just Dirk was on top of it. He was he was the best player in the league that year. Right. And I kept he, saying he all year the, long. After that loss to Miami, Dirk was a different player. Mm-hmm. You know, like I say, we got to knock on the door before you kick it in. After that loss, Dirk was humiliated. He came back the next year even better, and he led his team to a championship. Mm-hmm. He got an MVP so, year the year before. Absolutely. And he came back and won that title. So, yeah, he it was – Absolutely. He was the best player in the league that year. I, I saw it the whole year. That was, absolutely. That was a special year for us. Special year. And he had, well, he had been we, groomed by Avery Johnson, not Carlisle. Mm. So I'm not going to even get that Carlisle. That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. Well, I'm excited for that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see this close out. We got a lot going on this summer with the Olympics coming up, man, and um, – before we close if there be out, an man, Olympics, you say what now? I think if if it be Olympics, I, the way it's going, yeah, it might not be question, anybody yeah. to play. Yeah, I mean that's that's, question, they might have to call that, you know. Yeah, that's the question. Know. I don't know if they're gonna have enough players to come. <laughs> right. I don't know. And, you know, I, and a lot of them may back out, man, because they said they got the highest COVID over there, you know, and and no fans and. You know, just like playing in the bubble, I guess. But you're playing overseas, yeah. man. And so yeah, but but if know, they if they're able to pull it off, it will it'll probably be the most watched Olympics of all time. If they can pull it off, yeah. right? Because won't nobody be in the stands. You have to watch it. <laughs> right. Know, so. right, 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 right. Yeah, the way it's going, the United States may not win basketball, and. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I they, think they, they don't play win. They, win. They don't win a go. Don't worry about that. They don't okay. Go well, if they them. don't, that'll, no be a, about it. that'll be news of the, of the century. Yeah, they don't, that, they, I guarantee you, they're going to do it. There's no okay. doubt about it. They're definitely going to do it. So I don't before think we KD close and out, and I want to just say, uh, before we close out, I do want to just say, man, thanks for joining me today, Royce. It's good to be back on the air with you again, and hopefully we'll keep this up and, Get our fans back, uh, like fans back listening, man. Well, we have to do a fans show tomorrow listening. night or day after tomorrow after the game yeah, tomorrow course. night. Of course, so of course we'll be back on. We'll be back on Wednesday. Okay, sounds good. We'll be back on Wednesday. But before we close out, I don't know if you saw the news, but this is this may be old to you. You may already know, but you know what team is going to be on Hard Knocks this year? Uh, let me guess. Let me see. It's not Seattle. It's not uh, Minnesota. Is it Dallas? Oh, I knew that. It, it is the Dallas Cowboys. So we have even more to talk about. I know you're excited about that. That's a bad <laughs> omen. Anytime y'all on the hard knocks, you lose. <laughs> That's a bad omen. <laughs> yeah, man. We're gonna, we gonna have think, a lot to I'm talk about. I'm trying to think what, what team has been on the hard knocks and went on to win the championship. I can't um, think of one. I can't think of one either. I can't yeah, think, I can't of, think one of one. But, so, but we know it'll, be, it'll be the most watched. It'll be, it'll be good ratings. It'll be good ratings, if nothing well, else. <laughs> one thing about Dallas, they're going to always be in the news, but I don't know if that's a good yeah. one. But I got to get to Jerry. He pulled it off. Yeah, he did. Okay, yeah, he one more question did. before we go. What do you think about Dirk and Luca being on there? Uh the cover of uh, the games. Oh, okay. NBA two uh twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I think it's Push great, man. I, I I think I think it's great. I know I know Dirk's been on there once before, but Luca getting on there is a big deal. I am a little I'm a little I'm a little bit uh concerned because of the curse. I mean it's just it's inevitable. It's like the Madden curse, it's the NBA cur- NBA two K curse as well. I think that's I, that's something I'm concerned about, but it's big. It, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like for Carl out a quitting situation like this, you know. Absolutely, again, you got the best player in the world. 
it was time for him to go at the same time. So that, that's that's kind of my frame I'm keeping. But man, you know, we 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 let you slide on a lot around here for, for years. But I would say like me, I would have been excited about coaching a guy like Luca. I mean, you know, come on, of you got a once in a lifetime general like having dirt. You know, once in a lifetime generation. Yeah, you must uh, I, I was he had a good situation. Chance. It's not right. many. It's not many coaches out there, aside from a Greg Popovich, a um, a Phil Jackson, that can say they've had right. generational, te- you know, like players, right. like MVPs, right. you know, uh, caliber right. players in different generations. Yeah, you know what I mean, like Absolutely. Phil had Michael. Phil had Kobe. You Kobe. Know, Shaq, yeah. I mean. And he, then Popovich had the Admiral, then he had Tim Duncan. So he had like right. a lot of, he had Kawhi Leonard. He had a lot of guys. Right. Right. You know what I mean? There's very few, there's very few uh, coaches that can say they've got. Yeah, Mahomes, Dwayne, Ray, LeBron, James. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's very few coaches that can say that. I mean, even Spolster, though, he's like the longest, I guess, the longest tenure coach of one franchise now. They call right. out left. So, well, I take that back. Popovich is still coaching. Greg Popovich. Yeah, he's, right. one, he's one of the older guys. But he had Dwayne Wade, LeBron, Chris Bosh, and then came back with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. So, he's he's had two as well. But Carlisle right. messed a good thing up. Did go back to Indiana? Yeah. Indiana absolutely. don't have Luka, don't have Luke on no. their team? No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. I don't think him uh, – like I said, that really was a step back. I don't know if that's a, a retirement paycheck for Carlisle because I'm, I'm pretty sure as long as he's been coaching, he's, he's been paid very well. So yeah, that may be yeah. A retirement and as they check. as they yeah. say, he 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 fumbled the bag, Royce, as they like to say. Right. That's what the youngsters Absolutely. say when you mess up like that. You, you fumble the bag. From the bag. That's yeah, I got it. I got. That's what he did. That's what he did. All right, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Make sure you check us out each and every week, Mondays and Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Call in 319-527-6059. Tell everybody that we're back on the air. We're coming back. And go to the website, of course, rfsportsradio.com to check us out. Any any last words before we go? The Cowboys on hard knocks. I got to watch that every week of the football team and stuff, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be back. All right, you got to take it. Okay. Uh, All right, we'll talk to you I guys. I know you're going to enjoy it. All right, goodbye. Good night.